Hello there, good afternoon. Hope everyone is well. Just going to go through our normal checks and then we're going to get carving on this love spoon. Just wait for this to come online. Here we are, here it comes. We just unmute it a second. And we're live. There we are, right. Um, as you can see, we've got a spoon ready to go. And the first carving I'm going to concentrate on is this one here. It's a book. So that's the first thing that we're going to focus our attention upon is creating this book shape. And it's a carving I've done on a few occasions. It's, how can I explain? It's not the easiest of carvings. What you've basically got to do, you've got to concentrate on getting the different levels. Oh, the carver's joined us. I'm thinking, have you changed your profile picture there? Very nice too. Looks good. Um, yeah, and uh, as the carver has joined us straight away, anybody who uh, hasn't already, make sure you get across to the carver's new channel. Check it out. We've had video number three uploaded. Another nice little demonstration. Great for us here, being a Celtic nation, because it's got a Celtic theme. So yeah, get across to the Carver's channel after the live stream's finished, of course, and check out some of the videos on there. Other, as, other little uh, things to mention as well. I've been uh, very interested to see on Stephen, um, on his Instagram, another channel worth checking out is Stephen's 8x6 workshop. And... Um, on his Instagram, it's been great following some of the um, uh, some of the love spoons that you've been making. It's been fascinating to see. It's nice to see you got a got a nice style that you're using, and good to see that the love spoon is proving popular. So as you can see, the first thing when we're looking at this particular carving that we're doing is we've got the, the sort of rim around it. So the, the, the idea, if I explain the background on, on the style of book then, it's like a hardback cover book. I have the other, it seemed a bit dated. Ah, no problem, no problem at all. Yeah, it was just when I could see the colours there, and they were unfamiliar colours. That's the one I remember you taking from last year, the photo you took from when you did the... Uh, the um, that exhibition show type thing you did with the Christmas tree place. Um, yeah, so the first thing that I'm looking at is to drop the depth, to drop the levels down on this sort of hardback cover, and then I'll go on to shaping the book itself. Now, it's quiet in the workshop at the moment. There's a bit of background noise. Something's just fired up a machine or something outside, but... At the moment, Thomas the woodcarver is not here. And Mr. S, spoons are looking pretty darn good. Yeah, they are indeed. Um, yeah, the reason Dad is not in the workshop at this moment in time is because out the front of the car park, we have a car park here that's large enough to get coaches in. So when our workshop is operating, shall we say, normally, We've always had a lot of coach groups, a lot of visitors to the workshop over the years. Um, but unfortunately, then, we have a situation where, for one reason or another, our car park has become, over the years, a very popular turning point, shall we say. So we're always having people turning around in the workshop car park. So what we do is, so they don't churn up all of the chippings, and we don't have to constantly buy chippings all the time because uh, they get pulled out into the road and we end up having to sweep them back all the time. Uh, what we do, we put a chain across so it just slows people down. Unfortunately, though, somebody's hit the chain. So Thomas the Woodcarver is not very happy at the moment and he's out in the car park trying to uh, repair the chain. So that is why... He is not here at this moment in time. So he's not in the background doing any uh, scroll sawing, any preparation, that sort of thing. This particular love spoon as well, this is almost like, um, it, we, we can describe it, it's going to be a two-part with this one here. Because I thought, I started on this one earlier on, and I spent the, uh, well, 
the designing and a, a lot of the prep was done the other day but um the actual ah he is here he is here he's coming the the cutting out on the scroll saw i was doing this morning and i thought why not put the camera on and film a time lapse of the um of the the cutting out on the scroll saw I've just ex I've just been explaining to everyone why why this why it's a quiet workshop this afternoon. Good afternoon, been... Dad. Good afternoon, everyone. I was saying it's it's it's, it's not a very happy Thomas Woodcarver after your post has been it. Well, I got a cold. No, there, there's that as well. My, my post has been uh, somebody's dismantled. It's not the first time that's happened. And my neighbours just uh, informed me that the fox has had his chickens. Oh so, dear. Yeah. Which which direction? That that direction. That direction, yeah. Ah. So there we are. That's three 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 of them like them. You've got to watch you gotta watch those chickens like a hawk, haven't you? You have, I'm afraid. The the fox. Years ago we had um we had a situation where there was snow and um quite rare for us here. Not for yourselves in different parts around the world, I know particularly in North America at the moment. Um, but for ourselves here in Pembrokeshire, snow is quite an unusual occurrence, isn't oh, it? Absolutely. And um, it was absolutely fascinating to watch. You could see exactly where the fox had gone to. Oh, the carver says good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. And um, I remember following the, the, pa the, the, the trail of the fox and every day it would circle around uh, the the chicken runs, the chicken coops that we've got here, without fail, you could watch exactly where it had, it had gone to, um, and it actually saved us in that situation, didn't it? Do you remember why? No. We had a leak in the house next course, door, sorry. and because I was following the path, it was on Christmas Day, and because I was following the route that the fox had taken, he went and had a walk in next door's garden. And the next thing, I thought, wow, that snow's melting really fast on that house. And then when I looked closer, I thought, that's strange. It's melting on the inside of the house. <laughs> and then I realised we had a big problem. So, anyone who's interested in the, the carving side, if you're learning carving, just to explain what I'm doing here, I'm creating the impression that the book is sort of dropping back so i'm not carving it flat i'm carving back at a 45 degree angle so always using different techniques different methods and this is one then this is one so i've got to ask as well has it, has it had all of his chickens but you only had three left and it had the three yeah yeah um so yeah so what we're doing is we're, we're carving it back at a 45 degree angle and um, so this part of the book will be more raised and this part of the book then is, is pushed back so it's that sort of impression of an open book almost it'll be the same then these side pieces they need to be carved at an angle so we're trying to create different layers and different levels it's a carving I've done about three times. I don't think you've ever done one of these, have you? A book, yeah, yeah. a little while ago. Yeah. Different though to the the yeah. way I do this one though, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just we're getting those angles, trying to work out, trying to create that effect that the book is just sort of um what's the word? Tapering? Tapering away? That sort of thing. So yeah, that's what we're we're working out. Um I got to say as well, it was interesting. Um, if you do get a chance to go and have, and I definitely recommend it, have a look at the carver's videos. It's interesting to hear some of the little um, techniques and the the, the, the some of the um, technical aspects explaining the different tools because we're hopeless here in terms of we just call a gouge a gouge. But the, that one there, I think that's what um, we call them a big one and a small. A one. big one and a small one, we call them. But the, that one there, I think the carver was referring to that, and correct me if I'm wrong, as a, as a palm tool? Would that be right, Did I, I got the oh, carver, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, you call that one a, a yeah. palm tool, palm as, tool. as these ones are more full yeah. gouges. But it's interesting to hear, because um, 
yeah, I'm hopeless. I just pick up a gouge and start start carving. I never think about the different names. Um, I remember we get we get asked we get asked different questions like um, uh, you know through the YouTube channel. How do you sharpen? And it, is it an incarn incarnal? Not an internal. Well, no, they don't refer to it. I'm sure they call it an incarnal or something like that. And the first thing I got to do is go and find the word. It's, it's what we, as Dad was saying, it's what we would refer to as an internal angle gouge. But I'm sure they call it incarnal and excarnal and things like that. Is there a tractor or something? Sounds like a motor. Yeah. <clears throat> Fair bit of noise out there the, this afternoon. Right, so, I'm going to put this uh, bolt back on. That's brilliant. So you're doing, you're doing a repair job, are you? Uh, yeah, just for now. I'm going to... Ah, that's that's the repair job on the. Sorry, I didn't realise that's on the uh, the post. That's on the chain, yeah. On the chain. There we are. So we're just getting the effect of it dropping back, and it's the same, the same idea as always with myself, really, where I go to the carving that is is going to take the most. Um, that's going to be the most demanding for us, really. The, the dragon, there's a lot of detail in the dragon, but because I carve it so frequently, it isn't something that I really um, have to think about too much. As with this, it's best to carve it when I'm freshest because it isn't a carving that I do regularly. There's obviously a, a bit of a Cardiff link with this one because we've got the bluebird above the dragon. So a definite Welsh theme and Cardiff theme going on with this particular love spoon. But that's the beauty of the uh, the tradition itself is you can, you know, you can very much include all sorts of different things. So you've got the book, I think is of significance to one of the people in this particular couple, the Bluebirds Cardiff City Football Club. is obviously significant to the other person. The dragon with that Welsh theme. And then a rose. So I'm I'm thinking there's an English Welsh connection in this particular couple. It's kind of easy to say that, as if I actually know what I'm talking about. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're um, when it comes to like the technical aspects and stuff like that, because I just grew up around it. We just yeah we we I'm quite I'm quite sort of uh, with some of the terminology. I'm not the best. And in terms of the techniques and stuff like that, I, I tend to have I tend to have a style all of my own that suits me and probably doesn't suit many others, but it works. And it uh, it's proves proves effective for myself. And that's the most important thing. And I think that's something that underpins really what we do a lot of when it comes to the carving, is ultimately you know, we get asked a lot about different techniques, different methods, how we do certain things. But as, as a carver, you, you very much have to find out what suits yourself best, as opposed to trying and suit somebody else who's, who may be trying to teach you or who's explaining it. It's what really suits you as an individual. That's the key. And I'm a good example of that because myself and dad, we have sort of quite different carving styles. And you'll find if I try and carve in the style that suits dad, it doesn't work for me. And if he tries to carve in the style that suits, suits myself, it doesn't work for him. So I think there's some uh, wisdom when it comes to learning in amongst that, isn't it? Possibly. You have to find what suits, suits yourself best. So you've got a bit of a, a bit of a joinery job there, is it? Uh, yeah, just a touch. Yeah. Um, You've got to put a new, fix up a, a new post. So we're just going to drop the level down just a little bit further at the front here. What it is, is I know afterwards I'm going to have to drop this section of the book back in the opposite direction. So this is going to come back and into the middle, and then that is going to come forward and into the middle. So you're working out as you're going along how the different parts of the design are going to come together. Those of you as well interested in um, other parts of the project, the wood that we're using, this is a piece of oak, definitely the most popular choice that we have is, is uh, for the love spoons to be carved from oak at the moment. 
Although we did have a bit of a, a flourish of uh, interest in the mahogany. And then, um, yeah, the, the gouges, we use various different gouges. That's a question we get asked quite often, what gouges are we working with? We're using predominantly <laughs> vintage gouges. And um, they include Herring Brothers gouges, S J Addis, D uh, J D Addis, I think is the other one. Um, so yeah, a variety of different ones. So far, so good. I'm happy with everything so far. That's Thomas Woodcarver drilling holes in his post that you can hear in the background. So that's something. Uh, if you are new to our live stream, there's always something else going on in the background. It's usually Thomas and Woodcarver doing preparation of the spoons, that sort of thing. And you get the boys coming back from school at different times as well. Oh, I've got to explain that carvers have certain tools they tend to use more than others. You did, you have, you, the word you use is one we use as well, go-to gouges. Uh, I'll do better next time to explain the tool choice. Is a comfort question. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's um, no, it definitely came across. That was the um, the term that you used. Is one I like. Go to gouges. And what we mean by that, for anyone who doesn't know what we're what we're talking about, there, you have certain gouges that you that you go to. So if you sort of having difficulty, if there's a particular piece of the carving where you're not quite sure where you're going or if you're not quite sure what size gouge you want, you have certain ones that we describe as go-to to get us out of trouble. Now then, that is starting to take shape. We're gonna start to have a little look. I'm gonna just gouge it away from the dragon's toes, just like so, and all the claws of the dragon. And I know we're going to have to shape that bit back more than in the middle. What we're trying to sort of create is that rippled effect of the um, of the pages. That's the that's the the impression that is in in mind. So let's have a little look. Let's see how this comes out. It means this part of the page goes back further. And also then, we're gonna take this part of the page back a little bit further. Hand sanding, I know it's always optional. Or oh, Thomas Woodcarver's put in the post in front there. So that's what it is. He's put the bolt through there. And then that is gonna be his replacement post. That's a simple little job. I got one question. Um, or should we ask everybody in the uh, in the comments section to, to answer. How many posts do you reckon you've done over the years? Oh, there we are. Brush. Yeah, it is like Trigger's brush. So I'd tell you, uh, you certainly made a few posts over the years. There's been a few cars have uh, gone into those posts. It is. Usually in a bit of a rush. So the idea, see, is to just create that impression. We also add a bit of detail, see, with the uh, the pages of our book. Um, let's have a look. Perhaps we go with a curved gouge like that one there. It's coming on quite nicely. As I mentioned, then, there will be a um, all going well if it's edited to. Uh, um, if it's come out of the camera, okay. I've done a little demonstration, there's a little bit flaking off the toe, of how we prepare our love spoons on the scroll saw. So that'll be another, that'll be on the channel at some stage as a YouTube short. So you'll be able to get a little bit more insight into that process we use for uh, making love spoons. Right, now the reason I'm going over that a bit more is because we need a little bit more depth on this side, we need to drop the base of that book back a little bit further, just like so. And we're still gonna just shape 
where it bulges up. We're trying to create like a little bit of a curve effect on the page. So of course, when the pages come together in the middle, they drop back in, then you have that bulge, and then they sort of fan back out. I hope that all makes sense. Passion relates. Oh, hello there. Stephen's 8x6 workshop. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, that's part, part probably as well. It's me. I, I'm, I'm not... Um, I usually usually start the live stream somewhere between sort of half past um, and sort of quarter two, somewhere around there. But it's not, it's not a strict start time. The start time is basically governed by the... Um, the time I've managed to get all the cables sorted out, that's usually what governs it. We're a bit old-fashioned old here, see, we, have, we still have a lunch hour. So that's still part of uh, working life here at our family workshop. We have our lunch hour, and that goes, between, um, that goes between 1 and 2. And then I start start setting up for the live stream. Right, so that angle, this side... This side we got we got things pretty much as we want to. This side we got some work to do because this part we're gonna square what it is. I want to square those sides. I want to square it down a little bit more to make it more more book like, more page like. <laughs> this again though it's a great part of. Um, Working with love spoons, making love spoons. Um, oh, I missed that one. Been rushing it. Um, rushed it. A glue up to give you that. Love the Celtic Cross video. Yeah, it was a good one. And anybody as well. Um, Show the old one. There we are. There's the snap post. That's the broken post. It's seen better days. There we I'm go. I'm interested actually why I brought it in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested to know, I got to the age you now where that particular job that I've just done, yeah. it's been, I haven't done the job properly, I, it's just it's just a fixed job, yeah. right? But I wonder how, you know, what the proportion of people find, you know, basically that job is just to what happens if we don't put a chain across, then people just use the car park like a roundabout. Yeah. So, I, I just wonder how many people, sort of, you know that you really have to spend perhaps, oh, maybe as little as an afternoon, two hours maybe, to, re to do the job properly, but you just sort of think, oh, five, ten minutes, It'll just do the job. And I just wonder how either difficult or easy people find. Is it, is it an age thing? As you get older, you think, oh, I'm just going to fix it. It'll be fine for the next so many days, weeks, could even last a year or so. Or do you sort of got to get it right? Fix it in your mind and say, no, I've got to do my job. You know, there's another reason for doing it, because I've got a cold, I don't want to be out there in the wet. But it is sort of, um, there's a little bit of rain in the air. So I, I, I think rather, it depends, I think it depends on the job. Yeah, I'd rather leave it now, and even if I leave it I think where we, spring, I tell you where we're guilty. To do it properly. Well, I tell you where we're guilty in that thing. I think if we're doing a job for ourselves, we'll go, oh, that'll do. Yeah. If we're doing a job for other people, I, I think we tend to be quite fussy. Yeah. I just want to know how, how people, you know, I, I think it's sometimes because I, I'm, I'm from a building background as opposed to sort of a, an engineering background. Yeah. I, I know we've got some um, people that, you know, have been in the, in the forces. Yeah. And, and are obviously probably more disciplined then than, than I would be. And so I just I just wonder what the you know what if there is any I think I think we've always been the same. I think if there's a job for us we tend to say oh that that'll that'll do. I got a piece of I got a piece of furniture. I won't say it too loud just in case he I think catches wind of this, but I got a piece of furniture and I'm supposed to fix the backing board. 
probably about 10 years ago, and I never have. And it's, it, what it is, is that it's, it does the job. Nobody really notices that the backing board needs repairing. Yeah. But well, for me, when I was younger, a stitch in time saves nine. And so I, I would use that principle, but as I seem to get older... What are you on about? You're terrible. You've got jobs in the house you haven't done for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the, you're, the, you're the worst. It's right. A stitch in time saves nothing. You know, I'm just wondering, there's a comment over there, I, um, if, if, if anybody has that, you know, whether their lives have changed as they've got older maybe, you know? The carver says that for, for yourself or your age that you, 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 you put a band-aid on it until the weather turns. <laughs> There we are. That's thank you. Yeah, that's that's a good. That's a good um... If I now, this is very interesting because you 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 brought that now. That was a conversation topic. Now, if I went in there now, because you say you're saying about your stitching, your, your stitching time. If I went in there now and I asked Mum <laughs> about different jobs in the house, she'd give me a list of about a dozen jobs that she'd say you never finished in the house. <laughs> He's thinking now. For, any, well, for anybody building their own house, that's one of the worst things that you can do, really. Apart from the fact, yeah, it's great. You, you know, you can do what you want to do, but boy, oh boy. Um, well, you, I mean, you built your house. You were, you were, you were learning a lot as you were building it, weren't I know, you? I know, but I, I, you know, the best I, way. To I do mean, it there's. Is, Somebody else's, else's house, yeah, absolutely. Make all the mistakes that somebody else's. There, there's, there's one now, for instance. Now the one, a couple, of, a couple of the floors, for instance. You've, you've never been happy with them, but you've always said by the time you got to doing them, you were knackered. <laughs> so you, you. He's checking the comments now, seeing what's coming in. What did we miss? We missed something. Yes, Mr. C. I've been rushing to get. Oh yeah, I, I tell you what, if anyone didn't see that, that was a beautiful job, that was. I'm thinking from the photo, I was pretty sure it was, um, with the wood sandwiches, was, was it was it a um, tool handle that you made? A beautiful job, <laughs> came out beautifully. Even even got me tempted to try and get rid of some of the dust off um, off our off our lathe, but it, it's it still it still hasn't. We we still haven't used that lathe for. Quite some time. That's the problem. We always find a way of doing it with another piece of kit, isn't it? I'm not a wood turning has always been a, should we say, not my forte. There we are. Right, now what I'm doing here now, we're getting our sort of finished shape on our book. So we're creating that impression. We've got the different angles that we want. So this angle is going down, that angle going down at like a 45 degree. Can I ask you a favour? Could, um, oh, no, it's okay, I got a piece. I was going to ask him for a piece of, I was going to ask Thomas the Woodcarver for a piece of finishing sandpaper, but I turn around and I find one. Let her open the handles. Ah, right. It only took me three years to finish my kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Spot on. They were let her open the handle. Well, they're beautiful, they were. I started working out, see, when I saw that, I thought, wow, I could do that. And then I'm working out how I can do it. And I thought I could do that on the belt sander and on the, using the, using the scroll saw to cut it down to size. And then afterwards, finish it off on the belt sander. Me and the lathe have never got on particularly well, I'm afraid. My experiences with the lathe, the first, one of the first ones that I did, I, I remember I was turn, I had a go at turning two bases um, to put on, we had like a globe that we bought from um, somebody like Axminster Tools. And I, we had the idea, oh, we put some nice, put some nice bases on the globes. And so uh, I was going at it great guns and I was just working on the finish. And the next thing, I heard two popping noises. And I thought, I wonder what that is. I stopped the machine, and it had two beautiful splits right the way through it. So it obviously got too hot, and that was that. 
And then from there, I never did much more on a lathe. It wasn't my uh, my forte, but a fantastic bit of kit. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do on the lathe. But we always think of, uh, when we're thinking of different projects, we always think of a way of not using the lathe. Well, I use the lathe on the, on the weekend, because... Uh, well, what were you making? Uh, well, <coughs> a gentleman from the British came... came ah, of course. And... Um, he had a job there for you, didn't he? Repair, what did you say it was? It repairing was, a stool? Repairing a stool. So the leg had cracked, so we had to put a, a strengthening piece. Yeah. So um, we didn't have a piece of double, so we just turned the piece of double on the lathe. So it's quite useful. Oh, it's know. a useful bit of kit. But the first thing uh -huh. in my head, I always think whenever I got a job that I, you know, for that sort of thing, I'm always working out, how can I do it a different way other than yeah, using yeah. a lathe? Um, but that's just me. I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the go-to tools. You know, we have go-to machines and equipment that we use. And if I can find a way of not using the lathe, confidence, I think, is with, with that. It's just something I've never spent a lot of time learning. It's confidence. It's 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 a opportunity time. That's the thing, isn't it? Is it's a skill, and it's learning a new, a new skill. Uh, like everything turning is just practice you are spot on um yeah it, it is it's it's practice and it's time and because i you know because i've been brought up carving and you know always had to do scroll sawing we've never had the time to do it one day one day that may become a series on the, on the on the channel yeah Loves, of interest. Die Love spoons learns learn, learns to turn of interest for people i mean again i'm afraid we're back to money yeah, because um, wood turning projects, uh, I suppose you know everything is competitive, but in in our country we've got we've got a lot of um, it's probably more hoarding, yeah um, turned. Well, and the other thing as well, we're turning in this country. I would say it is probably more popular, isn't it? Yeah, but you've got. You've got, you've, got, you've got the mass production, for instance, if you're going to, you know, spindles for the stairs. Yeah. Then, uh, if you compare the price that you can purchase them for. Yes. You can barely buy the timber. For the same. For the same sort of price that you get a finished spindle. So, um, wood turning, to, to make something unique, uh you know, comparing it to a love spoon, yeah, uh, or even a, you know a, a carving, I find it more difficult then to um, <coughs> make something that that is uh, unique on the lathe. You know, obviously, it's uh, vetted, I would, but it... a wood turner probably wouldn't agree with me. Absolutely. Um, but but they, a lot of the you know over the last what 20, 30 years. A lot of the turning, it's been a little bit abstract then, you know, where people use what they call burr, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, right. I think as well in the, in the UK, I think it's, it's very, it is very competitive in terms of, I, 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 the impression I always get, there are more people doing wood turning um, than there are, um, than there are doing um, wood carving, which again makes it more competitive, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, in fairness, wood carving. I mean, when I first started, I used to do a lot of uh, lettering. I used to do yep. house names and different things like that. Well, again, you've got machinery. You can set a machine up to to carve a name in a bench or a a, a piece of work, and you know, and it's it's spot on. Yeah, and we, um, I mean, we get asked, don't we? We get asked to do signs, um, wooden signs, house signs, that yeah. sort of thing, and we we always. So we can't we can't do it. The other side of that though is that, for instance, now with the, the incumbent boards, yeah. um, I mean they went everywhere trying to find somebody to do it, and they right. they had to come back and ask us to do it. Yeah, because yeah, the one chap said his machine wouldn't fit on the board. It doesn't fit on the board. Um, it's, uh... So what I'm doing here now, we're just adding little bits of detail for for the. Um, 
for each each of the individual pages. This is coming on quite nicely, isn't it? Quite pleased with how that's coming out. Not the uh, not the first time we've carved this one, and uh, we missed a comment on there. Not the first time we've carved this one, but it's it's always a little bit of a, a, a challenging one, and you're, you're you're trying to remember how you've done it previously, and it can be a little bit tricky to to remember sometimes. Have you spotted something? Thomas the Woodcarver is reading at the moment. He's reading the, the comments. Oh, yeah, there, so. that's an interesting one from the carver, Dave. What was that one? Did you read that one out? Which one was that there now? The last one down there now. In the statement uh, from Thomas Spotter there, he said, I utilise it uh, similarly to the way I use the scroll saw. It gives me an approximate rough out and I can carve it. It's all perspectives. Yeah, spot on. Absolutely. <laughs> There's it's useful to have the lead. Yeah, and it it's it basically it comes down to, I think that's what it comes down to as well. Um, like straight away, if like I saw that item, lovely item, and go go and have a look on um, Stephen's Instagram at what what he what he turned there. It was beautiful, and and what I will do see, I I, I saw that and thought, wow, that's really it's lovely with all those different colours on there, and as soon as I've seen that. The first thing that goes up in my head is it, if I was going to do that, how would I do it? And the first thing that comes to my head is I would scroll saw it and then use the belt sander. Yeah. The, you know, that's that's what goes off in my head because that's what I'm confident at doing. That's what I'm most comfortable doing. As the lathe, the first thing I'm thinking of is um, I don't know which end is which with a lathe. <laughs> It's not something I've ever Again, spent a lot of time it's doing. Fun, isn't it is. We well, the other thing as well, like there's there's an interesting insight is in the workshop here itself. Um, sharpening, it's something that I I know how to do. And for instance, at, at home, then I'll do the sharpening on our knives and stuff like that. But in the workshop, um, what tends to happen is if I need something sharpened, I'll say to Dad, "Oh, can you sharpen that one for me?" And Dad will go and sharpen it. It it, it because that is. That's what you've always. That's how we've always done it, and it's you. Yeah. You get into sort of a habit yeah. of of that sort of thing, and it's the same. If if we want a piece of wood prepared, I say, can you prepare a piece of wood for that? You tend to take on certain roles, don't we? Because yeah. I don't like I don't like using the uh, the um, what would you call it the table saw. Most people refer to them as. Yeah. I'm not so keen on that now. I'm quite pleased with that. That's coming out all right. I'll turn that round so everybody can see. What do they say about self praise? No recommendation. There we are. What do you reckon though? Have a little look at that one. We get Thomas Woodcarver's feedback while I have a quick little drink. Silence. Um. Yeah, it's not bad. Oh yeah. That that's that roughly translates as that's incredible. <laughs> nice. You re you realise what that is on there, don't you? Right. Well, looks to me, it is a bird. Uh, it's the Cardiff City. It's um, the Cardiff City one. The bluebirds. Cardiff. Oh. The Cardiff City. Well, there's yeah. an interesting um, symbol with it. You've got. Uh, I, I'm thinking this could be for this could be for what's his name? Was it something Tan? Vincent Tan, the yeah. Cardiff City owner, because he likes a dragon. He's yeah. from, he's from Malaysia, isn't he? There we are. And he turned Cardiff bluebirds red. Remember okay. that? Yeah. Because he reckoned it was it was bad luck, wasn't it? The, yeah. So this could be uh, for for Vincent Tan to be perfect, perfect design for him. Um, yeah. Any anybody doesn't know, um, Cardiff City is the uh, the Cardiff Football Club. Although I'm thinking their their current predicament's probably best not mentioned, is it? No, I think they um, they they get themselves out of trouble. Oh, well, they are, are they? Yeah. Oh, that's so. all right then. I don't follow a lot of football. Yeah. I watch a couple of games here and there, but not very often. We're not, we're not talking about the rugby, of course. Uh... Well, we played. We played on, on Saturday. We, 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 we tried. We played? We, we, we did. We, we, we were there in, in, in Dublin. That's about all you could say about it, though, wasn't it? And uh, some interesting... Some interesting play... That's about all we can say, really, isn't it? Nothing much else we could say about it. Well done, Ireland. I think that's all you could say. 
Yeah, definitely. We look a better team than Wales by quite a distance. We scored a try, I think, at some stage, didn't we? Consolation, yeah. There we are, so, yeah. And it, um, <coughs> it, was, good. it was a good game. I, mean, I, I didn't watch all the games, but it was a good game, Scotland and, and England. That was a more competitive rugby match than... Well, it... Well, well, I'm carving. Did I, did I bring the subject up? I do apologise, folks. What's Be that? Of sport. Oh, you probably have at different times. Yeah, no, I just wondered if I brought it up today. Uh, not today. It, it's in my bad books at the moment. You're not. You're not very happy with it, you? No. But it's it's had a, it's had a fair bit of uh, it's had a fair bit of leeway, isn't it, in, with this COVID? Well, it's such a shame because I was brought up in the amateur world, and uh, well, it's a different world, now. It is a different world. It's. Uh, <sighs> anyway. There we are, and that's all Thomas is saying on that one there. Yeah, I, I, I best be quiet on that subject. Well, I I change the subject for this. I just seen Yelly going out there. She's going to get the the boys. They weren't very enthusiastic to go to school today, so I think they'll be glad to be home. Well, Monday's always a difficult day for them, isn't it? You know, it is. First day back. First day back. Yeah. And uh, we'll have birthday parties to organise next. That'll be the next on the list with them. They've been in having a go with the carving. And uh, I had Sammy there yesterday. It was a, a bit of a marathon effort getting through some of the different videos I've been editing recently. And I was sitting there checking everything was all right. And the next thing, Sammy's sitting next to me watching it. So it was quite, uh, quite nice for me, and he seemed to be enjoying them. So nice, nice that he's taking a bit of interest in it all. And uh, yeah, we uh, we get them in here at different times, having a go with the carving and uh, making different things. Nico enjoys it too, and it's always nice having them around the workshop. As you can see now, we've gone on to our dragon. No problem. We're doing some. Um, we're doing the some of the stock cuts that we need for it. I'm just gonna cut. Oh, what's this? Um, um, in the phrase, there is more than one way to skin cats. Yeah, absolutely. Is the phrase? Ah, is the phrase? It is here. Yeah, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Indeed. Or another one that my brother used to use. Um, there's more ways to kill a pig than to feed it to death with strawberries. That's a less well-known one, but that's another one that used to he used to use. I think that, I can't even remember where that one uh, came from. Sayings, very interesting thing. My wife, being uh, Spanish, it's interesting some of the different ones that uh, they have in different countries. Quite often they have very similar sayings. They just say it in different ways. And definitely in Spain, they do have some rather interesting little sayings, which at this moment in time, off the top of my head, I can't think of. Um, other than the, they want caviar for the price of potatoes. That's one that the Spanish use. And I have to remember a few for our next live stream. So in terms of the techniques again, you can see we're using the stock cuts. We cut down into the wood. One thing I'm always conscious of is because we uh, put the spoon on the belt sander afterwards, we're always trying to get a decent amount of depth on the different carvings. Otherwise, you end up carving them twice because when you put it on the belt sander, it just starts to take off that carving a little bit. The only area I would have a little bit of concern of here would be the top ridge there at the moment. I may have to go back over those in the carving. Oh, hello, Joe. Great to have you with us. And hello to Tommy as well. Didn't say hello to Tommy. Um, always good to see you carving. Yeah, we're here, we're carving away. We're, um, it's not too bad outside for ourselves at the moment. It's, uh, it's a bit of a, a, a typically Welsh winter day. So it's a bit gray, it's been a bit drizzly, that sort of thing. And, um, but it's, it's quite mild for the, the time of year. So this part of Wales doesn't get particularly cold. Um, and 
we should be soon here in Wales. We should start seeing the uh, the daffodils. That'll be one of the next things, and that's always nice because we can get some nice photos. Get the daffodils in here. Get some photos with the daffodils and the and the love spoons together. With of course them being one of our national emblems. You can see I've turned it round in the vice as well. The carving that we're doing. Um, we're going to also, whilst we're doing the dragon, we're going to shape the bluebird as well. So we're just getting that basic outline. And the only real markings on our bluebird is this line around the face of the bluebird. And then there's a full stop for the eye. But if I put that line in, I can put the full stop in afterwards. Yeah, hope all is well with everybody. I know there's been a, a fair bit of uh, snow in different parts. For ourselves, not too, uh, not too bad today at all. Cold enough for Dad sorting out logs for the fire, but uh, not too bad at all. <sighs> right. So again, we're just getting these levels. So we use the gouge to do the stock cuts down into the wood. We then use that stop cut to get the type of depth that we're looking for in the carving. Just like so. And this is, again, nice part with the love spoon where you can make it very personal, very original, and very specific to the couple so you can get elements in the design that are sort of peculiar and unique to the individuals. And to explain the process that we go through start to finish, you start off designing. That can sometimes be actually some of the most difficult parts of the process because you're, you're looking to, what you're trying to do what you're trying to achieve with your designing is, is something that the individual who you're designing for is happy with. So that can be a little bit challenging because we've all got different ideas. Um, we've all got different things that we're looking for and different sort of... Um, it's, very, it's a difficult, challenging part of the process because you're trying to figure out what another person has got in, in their head, and that's difficult. So one thing we quite often say to people is if you want to draw something, um, by all means do, because it gives us a better idea of what you're looking for as an individual. You sometimes think you're almost trying to read people's minds, trying to figure out what they've actually got in their thought process when it comes to uh, the design of their love spoon. The dragon then, probably the carving that I do the most frequently. And um, certainly is a, it's always a, a time consuming carving, but it always has lovely detail and lovely character. So we're just getting that wing, getting all of the lines, all of the stop cuts ready on the wing there. You're busy preparing the logs there. Yep. Another thing then that we've been um, going through and something that's going to be becoming more of a feature on the, the channel going forward, and that's focusing more on... Um, the side of it of where we get the, the wood from. Now I'm looking at this love spoon here and I have to get clarification from Dad. Is this from the wardrobe again? Uh, or is it from elsewhere? Is that a bit of wood from the wardrobe? Or have you reclaimed that from somewhere else? You have to turn it over. It's beautiful, it is. The wood on this one is really is, is spectacular. The, the silver fish on there, the, the character in the, oh, the Dalry Way. You didn't I? I, I yeah. marked it out recently. Yeah, that's yeah. from the wardrobe. Yeah. 
And we're going through that process again on another love spoon. And this is going to be, it's going to be the feature of one film, uh, one, sorry, one video, but the wood and what we do with the wood in terms of sourcing it, that is going to become an ongoing theme in a series of, of videos. Because for ourselves, it is an important part of what we do. Thomas Woodcarver is there in the background with the hand saw. I don't know what he's cutting there. What do you work? You've got a log, have you? Yep. So he's sorting out a log there, using the hand saw, as opposed to taking it back in on the, the table saw. Yeah, so the sourcing of the woods and the fact that basically with ourselves it is all it's all recycled and all reclaimed wood so that fact is going to become a, a recurring theme in a number of videos is just to draw more attention to that because the world we are living in at the moment there's a lot of talk about the environment and recycling reusing and just drawing attention to how you can recycle your woods is going to become a little bit of a recurring theme on what we do. Hi Tommy, here in Northwest, um, North Carolina, I'm thinking that is. Uh, we finally broken out of the snow, good goods, and bitter cold with temperatures in the 20s. Wow. The highs and some snow every few days. Spring looks far away, alas. Wow. It's a bit different, yeah. We don't see those sorts of uh, those sorts of temperatures. It's the area we're in, we're quite close to the sea, so it's quite mild. And but being here in 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 Wales, we tend to get quite a lot of quite a lot of rain. But that's the reason it's a very very green part of the world. So plenty of rain and milder temperatures. And then summer can be a bit of a lottery. We never know what we're going to have. Unlike when we go across to Spain with my wife's family, where they can pretty much guarantee each day what it's going to be like. With ourselves here, you've got no idea each day what's going to blow in off the sea. Difficult area for forecasting. Now, going back as well to our wood thing, it's it's a good way of getting the wood, and it's amazing the quality of the the wood that you get out of old furniture. It never ceases to amaze me. It is beautiful stuff for hand carving and for making things in. Really does work very nicely. The scroll sawing as well, as long as you've got a good blade, you want a good new blade in there, it'll scroll saw really nicely right so we're just going to drop that wing back and we are well on our way through this design so you can see the bluebird other than shaping it and putting that individual line there's not a huge amount more that we're going to do to it we're going to do a bit of sanding on it let's have a little look we got this one here right let's drop this this part of the arm, of our, that front arm down a little bit on the dragon. What I find I do now more with the dragon is to drop it down in levels sooner because I don't need the, the guidelines to follow. When you're learning a carving, especially a carving with so many, so much elaborate detail on it, you tend to need a drawing or guidelines or something to follow but with the dragon now it's something I carve so frequently that we don't need it there we are so we drop the levels down on that one there um, oh there's a question from the carver for for Joe there looks like you're in the close proximity to one, one another 
asking what part of North Carolina you're from. And I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong when I say NC, North Carolina. I'm thinking we had a love spoon last week was going out to the west coast, out to California. First one we sent to California for a little while. But we've had love spoons go all around the, the US. Always a, a part of the world that we're very grateful for the uh, fantastic support that we receive. And especially here on YouTube, we get really good support from the, the US. In fact, the numbers tell us that we get double the support from the US. And we get very good support as well in Canada. Right. More so than, than here in the UK. Well, our profit is not without honour except in his own country, dear. So there we are. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. There we are. But it's great. We're very grateful for, for all the support that we receive. And uh, hopefully some of what we do is, um, yeah, it proves useful and proves interesting. I'd like to say hello to anybody from BBC Wales. Oh. There's no point because they're all sleeping. Yeah, Thomas Woodcarver's got it. Got a bit of a bugbear with them, haven't you? I suppose after being here for 50 years, how many times have you featured with them? BBC Wales? Well, let's give the background to the story. Let's, let's give the background with the story with, with, with these. Because over the years, I mean, we're, we're quite a, an unusual... We're a, we're a very unusual. And every day we become a little bit more unusual because there's so few... There's so few carvers around and, the, and especially love spoon carvers in Wales we are a a select small band would you suggest is that a fair assessment well I mean Wales is a small country a very so small country just yeah three million population. yeah and so and you country. opened here in 1975 and we've been very very lucky over the years because we have featured on um, all sorts of TV programs we featured on uh, on the the BBC, but in in the UK, um, on a, on several occasions, we've been on ITV, that sort of thing. Um, we've even been on CBS News yeah. for our friends across the the pond there, and um, that was actually that was fantastic. That was new. You, you realise how big a place the US is. Um, and yeah, so we've, I think over the years, we, we've had Spanish TV in here, um, so we were, we were, as Del as, as Boy would say, we were knocking them bandy with our Spanish, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not about you and me, it's about the subject of the love spoon, the fact that it's... it's well, I'll tell you now, I'll tell you now, an interesting one, actually, they, they, there is a serious point with this. Do you know, I've only ever seen them do one video, and it was on Facebook, about the Love Spoon. And do you know what they did? Do you know what they actually did about the Love Spoon? They, they, they made a joke of it. There we are. They made a joke of it. And that is all they've ever done. And you just think, aye, aye. And that's all. So, and that's, that's, in our own, that's in our own country, you must. And um, that's all they ever did, was, was made a joke about the, the Love Spoon tradition. So, um, but to be honest, it didn't, you know, in, in terms of it, uh, I mean, if people think that, it, it, well, did that upset? Uh, no, because we, we've sort of heard it all before. We might be carving a wooden spoon for the Welsh rugby team. <laughs> it's looking that way, isn't it? Well, they, they actually carry a, a love spoon around with them. They do. You know. They do indeed. Right. Which is, which is a, a, again... You know, it isn't a very well thought idea because it's it's always the, the newcomer in the team. That's right. It's been the love yeah, if, in fairness, it's, it's a bit of fun that they have with it, so it's a bit of fun, but it's it's extremely sort of for somebody like me here, like if I was to carve the Welsh symbol, it would be the dragon. And I and the Very northwest point, close to Tennessee and Virginia, where the three intersect to about four thousand foot elevation. Wow. 
that's a fair that's that's a fair that's a fair distance up that is very interesting because we we um as i said we have love spoons that we've sent all over um well there's one perhaps perhaps our friends in the us can explain this one to us we send using royal mail and for for by and large they they they're pretty good royal mail aren't they for getting the uh for getting the parcel to yeah, very, the recipient. The, the, the service that we have now is, uh, at, you know, fair play, it, it's been it's, very good. It's been pretty good, all in all. Yeah. Um, the there's a very strange thing that we find when we send to the US. If we send, um, depends where it goes. For some reason, if it's going to the northern part of the US, so if it ends up in the Chicago sorting office, there's usually a problem. Yeah. Um, I usually have to put in an insurance claim, and as soon as I put in an insurance claim, they deliver it. But it seems that we have to go through this strange it process. Down to the, the virus. I think there's part of that, but it's. Oh. I just wonder if our North American friends there have got any insight into what what goes on in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> What have they got against Welsh love spoons in Chicago? What's the delay? Although actually, I think I just thought about that. Chicago's got very, um, very good Welsh society. Right. So um, perhaps they take it to the take it to the, the one of the groups, share it with them all. But going back to it, yeah, um, what Thomas Woodcarver was saying is that basically, yeah, he's he's been here for fifty years. We've been here for fifty years, and. In that time, BBC Wales have done a grand total of um, nothing much on the Welsh Love Spoon tradition. That's right. When they do, it, it's always featured around the Welsh Folk Museum, St. Fagans. Right. Um, it's all waste on me, I don't even watch telly. No. And I think that's the future of uh, where things will be going. Now, projects like this one here, certainly a bit of a challenge so these are more a lot of these carvings you know things like the book and the dragon um certainly not things to take on you know if you are an absolute beginner unless you know you really want to um because they they do sort of push your your, your carving abilities but hopefully, seeing the process, seeing the methods that we use, hopefully it gives a, an idea of how you can undertake these these projects and these these different carvings yourself. For, for anybody as well outside of Wales, not realising, um, it's it's the media. Strangely enough, that um, although they, they seem to miss out, the love spoon within society generally in Wales, it's it's very much um, uh, well looked after. Then. Oh yeah, I think there's quite a there, bit there of interest. Who, who, who actually make um, collections then of love spoons, yeah, it, and decorate their walls with them. It, it's sort of, um, I mean, it's, it's great for us and for other love spoon makers because it isn't just the one love spoon that's made when you get engaged or you get married, um, they're often made for anniversaries, and and um, it, you know, people. People come in for a love spoon, and uh, I mean, you think of, you know your friend that used to do the um, life saving with you. Yeah, um, yeah, they have one every year. Know, yes, one just one every year. And he's um, from Cornwall. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, a lot of other people that that we know make a feature of it. I mean, there's one hotel. And whatever you do, sorry to cut across you, but whatever you do, a man from, from Cornwall, you you don't say, oh, you're from England. No. <laughs> That's an interesting thing. That's... Um... <coughs> but I mean, there's a hotel that actually decorate um, their hotel. Yeah, they, they do like the... Well, that's a very sort of... Um, 
what would you call it? A very in vogue type hotel. Oh, heck, oh, and they, they you know, time. they have an interior designer and things like that. And it's very interesting because they use the love spoon as a, excuse me, as a as a really important part of the interior design of the hotel. Well, there was an attempt last year, if you remember, <coughs> one of the um, personalities uh, had a dress or something designed like a love spoon. Uh, that was Beyonce. There we are. But I, 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 I Beyonce, I saw it and I was, they were, um, there was a bit of a, what, what should we say? A bit of artistic license going on yeah. there. I didn't see much yeah. of a love spoon connection. That looked, that, that, that looked like what they do what a lot of they, what, well, it looked to me a lot like they say with the science all the time, you've got to look at the science. A lot of the time they come to a conclusion and then work their way back to how they got there. And it looked to me as if they'd done the dress. Yeah. And then when they were asked, what was this inspired by? They said, uh, oh, the, the Welsh love spoon. And it didn't really, it didn't really have anything much to do with the, what I would recognise as a, a love spoon. I would have said it was more Celtic influenced, really, which which ironically is the Celts. We use the Celtic designs a lot, but the Celts and the Love Spoons. Are right. <laughs> You've got a squeaky Separate bench things. there, dude. I got a squeaky chair. I know. I do apologise for that. That's been going on for the whole live stream there. Um, it's because the it's a recycled it's a recycled chair. It's an old like um, kitchen or bar stool, and. Um, Instead of throwing it away, I thought it's perfect for, for the workshop, so I've kept it ever since. But the problem is, is because I'm using it every day for the carving, like like most of us, it's got a screw loose, isn't it? Yeah. Like the carver, the chair's got the screw loose. Another area as well, and I know it's something that we talked about quite often, but it's another area that we're looking at once more and it's something that we have to look at quite frequently uh pricing and at the moment we're looking uh at a situation where we're gonna have to have a, a bit of a review of of our pricing again well it's going to be a battle because um unfortunately everything today well they put the costs of everything but it's a bandwagon it's it, you know we haven't put our prices up for quite a long time, and it's now it's starting to get a problem, you know, in, in terms of we don't put our prices up, and we're always sort of trying to, you know, this is something that people, if you are making stuff, it's always, if you are making stuff and selling it, this is always the sort of et eternal dilemma, isn't it? Yeah, well, we're I, know, always, I know oil as, you know... Well, we're trying to do a fair job for a fair price. That's what. That's yeah. always the 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 sort of idea that we take. Um, that's always our um, mantra. Is it mantra? Is that the right word? That's always the the attitude that we take. But we what we found is that everything around us seems to be going up in price. So. Because we haven't gone with that, um, it's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, but if you're making a living, if you, you know, well, you, you you shouldn't have to um, you shouldn't have to put your prices up just because somebody else has um, you know they put the oil prices up, the gas prices, the tele everything has gone food, with it. Um, food food prices, general bills, everything's gone up. You know, but it, 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 to me, it, it's just, oh dear me, it just seems uh, a little bit uh, jumping on the bandwagon, that's what I uh, think. Yeah, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to put the prices up. No, I know. I don't, you know, it's not a, it's, it, it but it's just something that. Um, yeah, but you, again, we're using the same argument, oh, we're forced to put them up because Everything else has gone up. And, and, well, that's uh, what I'm saying. You, you are, basically. Um, so, yeah. That's something that, again, we find ourselves having to look at. Working well, yeah, with it's cherry something to look at. Working with cherry now, 
from a homemade bed headboard. Fantastic. Very, very hard wood. Yep. Yeah. So beautiful. I'm surprised it was thrown away, but seeing more of that nowadays. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the wood you can get from, we that's basically the sort of thing we're looking on. What we always find with the cherry, carves nicely. Very nice wood for, for carving, cherry. It needs... Uh, it needs a good sharp blade when it comes to the scroll sawing. So when we're preparing it, we have to have a nice sharp blade to to do yeah, that we, preparation. We've we got on quite it. a bit of cherry that we had from the um, oh, the me the tree surgeon. Yes. Uh, it, it, on the outside, it doesn't look very good, but when you clean it up, it's um, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and it's <laughs> when you're working it on the saw. Um, it's it's got like a an almond smell to it. Um, yeah, because for us, cherry, cherry sort of, well, for um, ourselves here, w there are two different types of cherry. There's the fruit and there's the flowering. So there's we we refer to two different types, um, but they're both referred to as cherry. Both nice for working in. All the fruit woods are nice for for carving, and the nuts as well. They carve very well. These parts of the carving as well always have to go carefully and delicately when you. Do you need the shellac? Not for a minute. If you want to get it though ready, that's fine. Okay. But um, yeah, going back with the with the pricing and things like that, that's where it sort of gets difficult. Is um, is because everything has gone up. It is proving more difficult with all your costs increasing it is more difficult to, to keep up with everything you can see we're just bringing those claws down and another thing we are finding then is that we are getting a lot of requests for um, bespoke spoons and it is difficult to accommodate everyone in terms of what, most, most what people, people are very good though, dear, but you know. Oh yeah, but it's we are having a number of requests where what people are looking for is somewhat ambitious, shall we say that? Here we are. But as we mentioned, that's one way for keeping our costs down is sourcing the wood. You know, a lot of our costs come down to the, the time that we spend making an individual item. Yeah, and I mean, you take it. The, the tree surgeons that we got around here. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's two that we're in with, and they're really generous. Oh, absolutely. You know, they... they um, absolutely. They often just leave timber. <laughs> if... If we if we're not in the workshop, they just leave the timber outside. Yeah. Um, and. Um, but sadly, the, that's the that's what I'm saying to you. Sadly, the reality is is that everything that we everything we're doing is going up in cost. Yeah. And that is that's the situation that we find ourselves in. Um, you know, and to to survive. We've also then, you've got the other problem where the workshop itself, we've had two years of not running as, as we normally would. Well, good news, next Tuesday, we've got our first coach in. Yeah, first coach of 2022. We'll have to look at the regulations, whether we're going to wear masks and goodness knows what. Yeah, no, it's, we will have to check it all out and I, see I what we can do. I don't the score is on that. I would have thought. Oh, well, I'm I'm going to be wearing a mask as right. much as as much as I possibly can. I'm going to have the mask on. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what the rules are, but I I will have it where where possible. Right. And masks and things like that. They're a bit second nature for ourselves because it's woodworking. We've always got a mask on. So hopefully. As we're going through this now, you can see that dragon taking shape. And uh, we've got the bluebird, that is finished. Our book is also finished. 
and then it leaves those entwined hearts and the rows at the top. Reason that I've chosen to do it in this order as well is is basically all hinged, all hinged on the book. So because the because that was the design that was very much the most taxing in terms of working out, that's the one that I wanted to get completed first of all. It's the most difficult bit, isn't it? To... It's the most. I would say it's the most unfamiliar. Yeah. Um, you know because. They're, they're, they're all individually, they're all sort of challenging carvings, but that one there is the one that we we carve the least frequently. So you have to work out all of that. The main thing though, we got a good sharp gouge. We've got a sympathetic piece of wood. And other than that, we got a squeaky chair. We're actually as well, we're making good progress because we, we had a, as we mentioned on previous live streams, we had a number of bespoke requests come in. So we're well on our way to getting through that list. And uh, hopefully then we can uh, start turning our attention to other things, other projects. At some stage, I would like to do some scroll sawing live which is always interesting because uh, you never know with that if you're going to have a blade snap or something like that. The only difference though with doing a, a live stream with the scroll saw, it's more difficult to explain what you're doing. What I tend to do is to scroll saw and stop and explain and so on in that form. Whilst I'm used to doing the dragon, it, it never ceases to amaze me. There is a lot of uh, a lot of work on it. Yeah, if you put the the dragon, mm -hmm. the other dragon there, <clears throat> just put that one alongside it there, just to explain, you know, how different that one is. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, I mean that's the. I'll put it on there. What it is, we do two different types of dragon. We do quite a simple interpretation of a dragon, and then we do the full pen dragon. And it's, this is the, we always used to do a simple dragon. There's a few other dragons we've done as well over the yeah. years, but this is, this is the main one that we do. That's the other dragon, as you can see, a lot more simple. And we do some little markings and things like that on that one, but nowhere near, nowhere near as demanding a carving that one as that one there. Yeah. But the last little part of completing this one is to put some markings on the wing. And a lot of this then, because I'm doing this carving on quite a, a fairly regular basis, probably carve three or four dragons every month now. Um, you're doing a lot of it by eye. And the nice thing, because you're taking off all those markings, each one that you do will have little sort of subtle differences. So just join in those ones like so. And the other thing that I try to do when I'm carving all of this is to try and drop those levels down Meaning when we take the paper off afterwards on the belt sander, it doesn't, it doesn't affect it. It doesn't take off the carving. It reduces, reduces the amount of work that we're having to do. So like that. And then we're just going to go in. One there. And that one there. And then afterwards, we just do a little bit of detail into those lines. So using the different gouges, we just take out a little bit extra. In around just like so. But as Dad was mentioning then, yeah, there's signs that this year is starting to get to get moving. So the first the first few inquiries we're having about if we can uh, if we're open, so that's all good. Nice to see a few people coming through. 
we'll have to have a little bit of a, a tidy up. And so the middle of February, we should start to uh, see a little bit more happening here. There we are. Just like so. I think... Do you want to put a coat of shellac on that one then? I put the brush there if you did, but... Yeah. Okay. So, Brilliant. Okay. Right. We put a little bit of shellac for you all to see. And I think for today... Last, there's a little... Where's there a spike? I just want to take that out from there. And with this one, when we put the shellac on, this is going to come up a beautiful, beautiful colour. A couple of times as well, different ones have asked about the, the shellac that we use. is Fiddy's shellac. And the reason we like Fiddy's shellac is it gives you a nice matte finish. So if you're looking for a shellac, I don't know if it's available in the, internationally, but... Um, no, I don't know. I don't think it is, to be honest with you, but it's it's our preference because it's a lovely matte finish. And as we always say... Any good wax on top if you wanted to. Yeah, you can. Um, and as we always say, you, you, you put it on in, in like a vertical direction. And the first coat raises the grain, so we rub it back down. Second coat on, third coat on usually brings it up to a good finish. What do you reckon? I think we'll do a little bit more carving. Yeah. Yeah. On that one there. So we're on. Up the post office now. There we are. So we've had, over the weekend, we've had two spoons ordered. So Thomas the Woodcarver is taking those spoons up to the post office. And um, those will be ready for. All the best to everyone. There we are. That is Thomas the Woodcarver making his exit. And. Uh, I'm just going to carry on with these entwined hearts for you all, for you all to see. Yeah, going back to it then, it's um, when it comes to the carving and pricing and things like that, it's always, it's always a difficult thing to do because you're always, as I said, you're always trying to get the fair, fair price for, for, for a fair job with things. But pricing can be a really challenging thing because it is quite often difficult to estimate just how long a job is going to take to do, especially when you're doing individual pieces and it's sort of bespoke work, one-off pieces. It's so difficult to get a guideline because you're not sure how long it's actually going to take. And even with a spoon like this one here, where I've done all of the, the different symbols, I've carved all of these different symbols with the exception of the little bluebird on other love spoons in the past, even though I've carved all of them on previous occasions, it is still really difficult to price for them because you forget the work involved in a lot of these jobs. So, for instance, the book. You've got a rough idea because you've done it a few times before, but you forget how long it actually takes. And another thing that affects when it comes to the time that we spend on a spoon which was the case with this one, at different times I've carved larger and smaller books. Same, the dragon I've carved larger and smaller. And the strange thing I find for ourselves with the carving, quite often the smaller a person wants it, the more challenging it can actually be. So sometimes people give us uh, requests where they want very, very small um, dimensions. And that can be really challenging because doing very small carvings takes quite a bit longer to do. So that the same process. Thomas Woodcarver's back. Everything okay? Yeah. Shamai Aubrey, good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. I watched the other day your video with your, your Welsh cakes recipe. We'll have to have a go at that some stage. You can see we're just getting the levels on that one there. And we do some work on the rows as well. Yes. So Thomas the Woodcarver's come back just to check the postage details. 
what it is. We depending on the value of the spoons, we use different methods and depending on where they're going. So if we're posting internationally, it's different to if we're posting within the UK. So with the rows, as you can see, we start off in the centre and then from there, we will work out all of our stop cuts. So the first one, we've got one of our go-to gouges, our little, the smallest uh, gouge that I would use on a regular basis. So this is our Herring Brothers, this is number three. And that one there in terms of finding gouges, that was found in a local market. But great for us, because uh, it's a fantastic addition to what we've got available. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do all of the stop cuts from here. So we'll use the guidelines from the, um, from the paper drawing, use those guidelines and build up those stop cuts that afterwards we'll use them as the barrier. So it's those same simple little principles when it comes to wood carving. Stop cut down into the woods and then use that to work into. And the rows, what we're trying to do is to sort of create that effect of those layers in the style of petals. They're all sort of gonna fold into one another and fold into the center. But yeah, when it comes to working out the cost of a job it is difficult to do because um, until you start that job you don't really know just how long it is going to take and with one like this one here some of the things you can try and bring to your advantage as the maker is a nice sympathetic piece of wood that helps um, and another thing when it comes to pricing is, is try and get that design right and try and figure out any problems that you're going to have before. Um, if you can get it all sorted in the designing, that can make your life a lot easier. So sometimes you design something, you've always got to be thinking as you're designing, is that going to be practical from a, a, a making standpoint? Because you don't want to give yourself a headache later on. Will it be St David's Day? Yeah, absolutely. It will be so. Will be St David's Day. Oh, we got our weekly spam. There we are. Vor dot red. There we go. Now that that that's becoming a weekly thing now. A weekly live stream spam. Right. So we're just going to finish off these stop cuts. What I've tried to do as well over the years when it comes to the rows, um, some of the earlier versions that I drew had more petals. But the problem is the more petals you've got, the more work it gives you. And you're always looking to be as efficient as you possibly can. So I've just reduced down a few of the petals, which just helps us out then in that design. And to be honest, it doesn't detract from the design itself. So that's something, you know, again, you can try with different carvings, is to reduce down some of the, uh, some of the detail possibly, or in this case, some of the petals and just make life a little bit easier. So again, we're just separating, using that stop cut to separate the hearts away. I have missed one stop cut, which is that one there. And we will just show you how you use that stop cut as a barrier. And what we're trying to create is that effect where the petals on the rows, where the all those little petals, they all overlap one another. 
sort of disappearing behind one, disappearing behind another, overlapping. There we are. So we've got that one just going down into there. We do the same here. Oops. What happens when it goes wrong? We've just gone straight through the stop cut. My own fault. Because I should have turned it round to carve that. So we just re-establish the stop cut. Something like that happens. Re-establish your stop cut. And use that new stop cut as the barrier. Same here. Shaping that petal. Getting some more depth on it. Down further into the woods. And this one here again, that goes creating that effect where it's sort of disappearing in behind. And again, we mark this out, this love spoon, with a vertical grain. So that helps us with the process of the carving. Makes it stronger as well for us to work on. And then we're going to go in, just getting that, creating that effect that that petal, again, is just disappearing in behind the inside petals. There we are. And that is very much the process of making this particular love spoon well on its way. There we go. So hopefully that gives you a fair idea of where we're going with that love spoon. Um, when it comes to the channel, we have our usual Wednesday uploads. Uh, we'll have a video for you there. Not sure what this week's on. Last week's we were looking at, um, I figured it was, was it scroll saw blades? Yeah, sharing a few thoughts on that. Always interesting to have everyone's input on, uh, on the different ideas that we, we share with you all. Uh, we also had a, a Love Spoon short, so we'll have another one of those coming up. With the shorts as well, we're going to do, we got, what we're doing, we're, we're sharing some of the different projects that we do, some of the other bespoke spoons that we're making. Um, hopefully as the year goes on, I will get time to do a few different ones, some scroll saw in shorts again as well, that sort of thing. So they will all be coming up on the channel. There we go. For now, I think that will uh, do us for this one. But that is the process for how you can carve a book on a love spoon. Simple little carving. Hopefully, you will all have a good week and all going well. We will be back next week with another live stream. Thank you for joining us. I hope this has been interesting. And as we said, hope you all have a great week. Thanks again.